No More Bets is a Chinese film that is about online casino gambling and gambling addiction. It shows this world from all sides. You meet a group of young men that are super excited to travel to another country where they've all been offered these amazing jobs in the tech industry. They're going to work for a gaming company. Little do they know that they're basically going to end up being slaves, working in another country for a company that, uh, that promotes online gambling. We see the story from sort of three points of view. The first point of view is this young man that we meet. Um, his character's name is Pan, Pan Sheng. And he goes there and he's very, he's very good technically speaking. And he's forced, forced to work for this company. We then meet uh, the, the film then switches point of views to a character named, named Anna played by Gina Jin. And she is a model that's fallen on hard times and she's going to work for this company and she's going to be sort of the physical incarnate. She's, she's basically doing the online gambling. She's a model that you can gamble online and she's the person, you know, uh, 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 she's, she's the person, you know, throwing out the cards and helping you play, you know, poker or whatever. Yeah, she's the face of the game, basically. Yeah. The face of the game. And then you have, uh, Pan Sheng, he is the programmer, but they're all slaves and cannot leave this facility. It's basically ends up for a, a moment. It's like, I want to say a women in prison movie, but it's like women and men in prison in, uh, you know, forced to work for this company and they've had all their phones taken away. Then we meet a character named Tian. Sorry, Tian that's right. And Tian is one of the people that is, so it's interesting that the way that the story is told, you see one person's point of view, uh, Pan Sheng, the programmer. Then we get to another person's point of view, uh, Anna, the model, then another point of view. So the movie just follows this person and this person. And then the final person is this uh, guy named Tian. Is it Tian? Yeah. You're talking the, yeah. yeah the, the gambler. Uh, the victim, He's the yeah. gambler who's actually using this company and he loses everything, his life savings. He loses his family life savings, his home, he's, he's, his home. He's addicted to this app to gamble. And it shows his life completely unravel to the point where he attempts to end things. And you, you see him do this um, and it's and it's horrific. This is about the first half of the movie. The second half of the movie pivots to an investigation by the Chinese authorities to go after this ring. It is a suspense thriller. It's action packed. It's horrific. It reminded me of, of like those movies where someone is, you know, imprisoned and they don't deserve it. And they're trapped in this world. And it's, it's a nightmare. Also, by the way, No More Bets is the biggest movie in China this year. It's made over a half a billion dollars, currently $499 million at the box office. It's huge. I'll say this, and I want to get your opinion on it, Alan, uh, because I don't think there were any white people in this movie. It was all Asian people. I have no problem with that. I don't care. The, the movie, where it was set. I mean, the movie lacked diversity. I believe one of the women, uh, one of the models was white, but that was about it. Uh, yeah, I, was that were they? I don't know. I don't remember. Yeah, it was kind of during the party scene, and okay. Oh yeah, at a party scene, there was a, a there was a token white person in the background. Anyways, yeah. nobody cared. Uh, I I really enjoyed this film until it got to the third act. Here's <laughs> why: it gets a little preachy, and it it turns it goes full propaganda propaganda from china where they're showing these statistics about like gambling they do the ceremony at the end honoring the police officers who broke this gambling ring it is literally no more bets is a cautionary tale don't 
get into online gambling. It is bad for you. It will ruin your life. It's literally the Chinese government saying, stop online gambling. Do not mm. bet. All these things are a scam. You won't get the money. There's even a thing where it's just like, you know, he didn't bet in time. So they're holding the funds. So this guy thinks he's made a lot of money, but he hasn't. And it's, and it shows how the programmers scam them and keep them on. It's like, it's like you're seeing, it almost reminded me of uh, that, that movie, the social dilemma, uh, the documentary that's on Netflix. Cause it shows how they get people addicted to gambling apps mm -hmm on the phone and they're all scams and you never actually get the money. And so they hire these attractive women to be the face, these, the, these programmers to do it. And then uh, there's even a little thing about AI in the end. It's like, we don't even need all these people. We can just do all of this with AI. It's so for the first like two thirds of the movie, like I was sucked in, like this is a really good suspense thriller and the performances are great. The woman who plays Anna Gina Jin is fantastic. Very beautiful woman. Yes. Um, but um, then it just gets so, and I didn't, it's like, okay, I get it, but they didn't need to like so hammer you on the head with the message. I went to see it because I found it interesting that No More Bets is like the number one movie in in China right now. It's like big at the box office. It's not, it's not a Marvel movie, oddly enough. But Alan, what did you think of No More Bets? Yeah, I I'm kind of in the same boat you are. Um, I, I saw it as the, uh, you know, that story of the blind men and the elephant where, you know, one man is holding the trunk, uh, thinking it's a, tr uh, think it's a hose. Another one uh, is holding the leg, thinking it's a tree trunk. You know, it's, it's kind of one big issue of online gambling and taking it from different perspectives. Um, yeah. The, the only downside to having done it that way was this movie's long. It's over two hours long. And, uh, and it feels that way. Uh, and, um, yeah. And then. No, it's two hours know, and 10 minutes. It's two, two hours, hours and 10 minutes. Yeah, two, over two way. hours long. That's It that's is over two definition. hours long. Yeah. What's wrong with that? that? But, but yeah, that third act, it, it all of a sudden then turns into a, a violent after school special. Uh, I mean, this is, this is a pretty brutal movie. They, you know, people get hurt. Uh, people get tortured. Um, you know, that whole. I mean, it exposes this world where, you know, we live in the United States. We can travel to the 50 states and, and feel relatively safe. But here people are traveling from one country to the next and has to deal with, um, you know, dealing with uh, crime and crime families from different countries. And uh, and the your ability to save yourself, it, it, you know, it, it that kind of hit home and it got a little scary. I mean, you know, these are not children who are being uh uh, kidnapped and trafficked. These are human beings. These are full-grown adults, um, very attractive women, and computer programmers. Right, uh, right. So, I mean, that's a weird contrast there. Um, right. Yeah, I would I mean, recommend the movie. Okay, I don't know that I was giving a glowing recommendation. I, I think it was interesting. I think it was well done. And yeah, in China is the bestest ever. And uh, that, that was love. the thing that bugged me a little bit was how great China is that they busted yeah. this ring. They're so good, but, and whatnot, but I, and I, I should have actually emphasized how brutal the film is. I mean, yeah, people brutal. are brutalized. It's the, the, their captors are cruel. They're, they're horrific. And there's a whole conflict with the main captor, sort of the main antagonist, the main villain who has a young daughter. So they try to humanize him a little bit, but he's also a horrifying person. Uh, I, I'll say this. I really enjoyed it because I didn't, I went in with, with like uh, low expectations, but it is incredibly brutal. And you see like, there are consequences for everyone in this film, but mm -hmm. this is, but the, but the thriller aspect is, uh, is, is amazing. They play it like the suspense thriller, turns into like a cop film at the end. And then the sort of button on it is this propaganda, basically wagging the finger saying, don't you bet on those offshore yeah. gambling don't, websites. Don't you send Chinese money outside of China. Yeah, get, don't. Yeah. that's exactly right. Don't send Chinese money outside of China. Let the Americans do that. Don't, and they don't really focus on that. They focus on like yeah. where the money goes, how it's like dispensed, 
Uh, I thought it was really well done in terms mm -hmm. of a crime. So I'm recommending. It's one, I mean, it's one of the better acted Chinese movies I've seen. I I yes. will say I always have a problem with acting, Chinese acting. Uh, it's just over the top. This one is very well done. Um, and yeah, like you said, it's it's brutal. It gets brutal. And, uh, and, and also, you know, it, one of the biggest thriller elements there is how are they going to get out of this? And you 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 just can't figure it out. You just don't know how they get out of it, and um, and the, you know that's what I like about th good thrillers is keeping keep me guessing. That, yeah, exactly. So I was just yeah, and and I really like that the first sort of I, not maybe a little over a third of the movie is you follow this guy. Then they follow the girl. They go back in time and tell her story to find out how she got where she is catching us up to the moment that they're they meet like in a bathroom he's trying to escape right he's they they and then she's in the bathroom where this guy is trying to escape he's afraid that she's going to out him and then they cut and then they tell her story of how she got to the place that she's at then they go out of the world of the captors and and, and the the you know the behind the scenes of this this online gambling and then they go to someone who uses the app that they're making so it's it's cool that they shifted from these shifting points of view between these guys to or between these different characters to show the real cost and it all comes together at the end. So I thought it was very clever. I could see uh, an English made version of this and them screwing it up, but I I thought the brutality like you needed to show like that this is not these are not good people. These are not good people. And you need to feel something for the captors mm -hmm. and they really go through like what their daily lives are like and how horrifying it is. And, and then they give them their phone and send a message to your mom. Sorry, you haven't contacted her for being busy. And they're basically at gunpoint, Yeah, you know, being told, send a message to a family member, tell them you're okay. So, so they don't think anything suspicious yeah. is going and, on. And you also get a good picture of the, just the control aspect of it. You yes. know, how they kind of beat and torture these people into submission. Yeah. To the point where you know something happens at the end, and you don't expect the uh, the captives to do what they do, and you realize no, they've been mind controlled, basically. Right. Well, I'm recommending no more bets. I'd give it like a seven or seven and a half out of ten. Alan, do you mm -hmm. recommend yeah. it? Absolutely. Yeah, and definitely a seven. Yeah, I think it's it's a solid seven, and um, really the thing that I would not it would get more points but i think that like sort of knocking points off for the the ending gets a little propaganda but the thing is this the propaganda is actually like gambling is bad it's like yeah it's for fun <laughs> it's bad and but but yeah you're right it's almost like china made this as a piece of propaganda to tell people to not send money outside of china yeah yeah i mean look that that conspiracy hat i'll put it on yeah they're they're more concerned about chinese dollars flowing out of the country and being lost to criminals than they are about their people having gambling addictions. That's what, that's what I'm saying is it's like the message is something like, yeah, I agree with, I'm actually not a gambler at all. I, I, I will gamble for fun. I'm like, Hey, I've got like $200 or a hundred bucks. I am okay with losing it. If I have fun sitting at a table gambling for gambling and then drinking for free, whatever, I'll do that. But, uh, you know, I'm not, I've never gambling to me. I just feel is kind of a waste of money, but if I'm in Vegas, I'll do a little bit and then I'm out. Like I just prefer to hang out with people and whatnot. But, um, and I have real specific rules about how I'll gamble. I don't do not take this advice. This is not gambling advice. I'm only telling you how I play a certain game so I can play for a long time and lose less. All right. So here's my method. I like to play roulette. I think it's fun, which is the dumbest game that there is because it's a guessing game. Roulette is a guessing game. Okay. You've got uh black and red. You've got even and odd numbers. If you bet on a number, it pays and you hit that number. It pays what? 35 to one. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, but what you can do is you can split your bets. So here's what I do. Do not follow this advice. So what I will do is take a couple hundred bucks and I'll bet $10 on a color. 
So I bet on red. Then I only bet on black numbers. So what I'm doing is I'm covering my bet. So if I hit on red, I win $10 and I lose $10. So basically I'm even, right? Yeah. This, However, is, this is why you're not rich, Chris. This is why I'm not rich <laughs> because of this method. However, then it'll land on a black number and I get 35 to one. I've lost my 10 bucks because I've covered my bet. The only thing that will kill it is if it lands on zero or double zero, but I'll just, I'll spread the chips around. So the table looks kind of weird where I'm like splitting between two numbers, which pays 17 to one. Right. So I'll split and I've got like, I'll make like patterns and I've, I've covered like most of the black numbers. And then I bet on red to cover the, uh, an outside or same thing, odd, even, you know, you can, you can do odd, even whatever makes sense, black or red, whatever makes sense. It just means I will lose less frequently, meaning <laughs> I can keep playing the game. I, I took like a hundred bucks, turned it into $400 and played for like two hours and drank for free at uh, one of the times I was successful at this method. You have to know when to stop. And I was like, you know what? I took a hundred dollars, made it into 400. Then what I do is I take my, it's my other method. I take, See, I'm sitting here telling you I'm not a gambler. Now I'm telling you how I gamble. <laughs> then I take my winnings whenever I win and I put it aside and forget that I have it. So I'm only betting with the money that I, I, with the chips I bought, I'm betting with those chips. Any winnings go off to the side and I just put it here. Sorry. I just put my winnings over here off to the side. So yeah, casinos love you, Chris. But I'm not a big gambler. I'm like, <laughs> I, I'm just like, ah, uh, I'm in they Vegas. They just want you to give them their money. It's yeah, exactly. I, I, I mean, I play poker. I, I don't play games of chance. I'll play games of skill. And so uh, I play poker. The The comps are not that great, uh, but it's fun. And, uh, you know, that's that's what I do. And And no, I'm not a very good poker player. Yes, I am also not. <laughs> so there you go. Um, all right, let's, uh, so look, I recommend no more bets in spite of the fact that it has kind of a preachy message at the end, which isn't a terrible message. It's just, mm -hmm. you know, it's, Hey, gambling is bad. It's just, I kind of already know. I mean, that. yeah. I mean, we learned this is a true story. Uh, gambling is bad. It, 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 you know, it, it is addictive and they're trying to warn against that. Um, it's just, and, and honestly, the, the third act feels like a SVU episode. Yeah, the third act does feel like sort of like a TV SVU kind of thing. Um, but and yeah, that is the one thing that's really interesting. Like a lot of films do this now. I mean, Gran Turismo did this where there's a montage at the end. So mm -hmm. they show you not just, you know, they'll show you the real people that were involved in this. They showed you footage from the actual event is at the end of the film saying this is based on a true story. Not only that, here's the people that, that were fiction, that were, you know, a fictionalized version, but this is a real thing that, that is yeah, happening. And then also how pervasive this is in terms of it's a scam. It's not, it's not even a legit online casino. It's a scam. It's, it's, it's worse than Vegas. The, the odds are designed for you to lose. In fact, they, they set up a full crypto scheme. Uh, and, uh, and so none of it, you, you're not going to make any money. You're not going to meet these women, uh, but it's pervasive. Uh, Anyways, let's go to your, so I recommend it and Alan recommends it. Uh, just go in knowing, hey, you might be a little propagandized on something you may already agree with. So 